15 cute exotic animals you can own as pets. That's what the video is, and I've got one here. Very exotic. Cats or dogs? Come on, the answer's obvious. Then get ready as we count down 15 cute exotic animals you can own as pets. Number 15, the baby wombat. The northern hairy-nosed wombat is a medium-sized mammal that looks like a rodent and lives in Queensland, Australia. Count this me little in. piece of work is in extreme danger of becoming extinct. Whoa. There is only one colony of northern wombats left, so much so that they are guarded by a fence that protects them from dingo attacks. Number 14, the capybara. Before you go ahead and adopt a capybara, please reconsider your choices. While they are extraordinary animals and are very tame, there are many drawbacks to keep a capybara as a pet. Consider their size. They are huge. They are more than twice the size of a jackrabbit. They are the biggest rodents. <laughs> more than, I've never... The, they're more than twice the size of a jackrabbit. You know what I'm talking about. Twice the size. Keep Number 13, the pygmy gerboa. Although the pygmy gerboa appears to be made up of scraps from other species, it is well suited to harsh environments such as the Gobi and Sahara deserts. This is a fascinating rodent from Africa's deserts that you may never have heard of. They vary in variety of sizes depending on the species and they look a lot like a kangaroo rat, albeit with a significantly odd appearance. For good cause, they've been labeled as aliens. They dart and hop across the floor, balanced on small legs. The video, Dramatic Little Monster, which featured a strange looking creature, helped to popularize them. I like that. Number dude. 12, the baby Tamandua. There are numerous benefits to hosting a Tamandua. The species is affectionate for one thing. You could find that they enjoy nuzzling your neck while you read a book, walking around with you, and snuggling up for a sleep on a hot afternoon. They never bite because they don't have teeth, unlike certain animals. They rely on their keen front claws to protect themselves in the wild. Is it true that those front claws ever hurt? It wasn't done on intention. They are razor sharp, and if a young tamandu is riding on your shoulders and feels unbalanced, he or she will dig in. That's you. You have talons. See? Meow. Love you. Number 11, the fennec fox. Fennec foxes are known as the smallest foxes in the entire world and borrow behavior traits from both cats and dogs. Due to this reason, they're considered a great exotic pet. As adults, they reach up to four pounds in weight, which is not much, so they're okay for smaller households. They live up to 15 years and are caring animals. Oh, they like to play a lot. love that guy. Traits similar to dogs, but also have the independence of a cat. Usually legal to own in most states, oh, there are a few awesome. like Missouri, Minnesota, and Washington, where they're illegal. Fennec foxes are very sociable animals if trained from a young age, so they can make for perfect furry friends. Just make sure you keep up the pace with their seemingly infinite energy. Number 10, the Honduran white bat. So far, Fennec fox, number one. The dude's awesome. Although, who's this little pillowy creature? The Honduran white bat is also known as the Caribbean white tent-making bat and is a species of bat that is found in Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and western parts of Panama. It is unique to all bats in that it has a distinctive completely white fur which occurs in only three of well over 1,300 species of bats. They have a yellow leaf-shaped nose and ears and a black membrane on their wings. As cute as they are, keeping such a bat in captivity as a pet would probably cause it to experience terror, inappropriate and damaging nutrition, and terrible loneliness and boredom. Bats are capable of living over 25 years. Bats kept as pets rarely survive more than one year. Hence, unless you have a cave in your backyard and you are a bat whisperer, it's best you enjoy watching this bat in its natural habitat. Whoa. Number nine, the chinchilla. Domestic chinchillas can be kept as pets. Chinchillas are primarily nocturnal and typically do not like to be disturbed during the day, which may make them less favorable as pets to some people. Chinchillas are naturally very skittish creatures and generally do not like to be held, although they can become very attached to their owners. Because of their high-strung disposition, they are not usually considered to be good pets for small children. However, chinchillas can be very friendly animals if sufficiently acclimated to human touch, making them excellent pets for patient owners. Number 8. Baby Tiger Tigers are wild cats that have never been domesticated. No one of the six remaining tiger species should be kept as a pet. In fact, keeping any of the big cats... <laughs> now you tell me. Damn. ...species as pets is illegal in most states. Tigers are massive, powerful fang predators who consume dozens of pounds of meat every day and require acres of high-security enclosures. Number 7. The Sand Cat Cats are either the most popular or second most popular pet animal on the planet. 
Therefore, it's only logical to question if other kinds of cats can be maintained as pets. Several species of so-called wild cats are sold as pets, and hybrids between those species and domestic cats are created on purpose. Sand cats are a relatively unknown feline species that are gaining popularity due to their small size and resemblance to regular cats, but with enough distinguishing traits to make them truly lovely. Sand cats are native to Africa and Asia as dusty deserts, and they are susceptible to respiratory illnesses in most homes. They're susceptible to being fucking adorable. Number 6. Baby Llama Llamas are primarily used as pets and companions. Because of their typical low-key attitude, intelligence, and ease of upkeep, they are suitable for this job. Llamas are becoming more popular as pets because of their gentle natures, cleanliness, and pleasant demeanors. Llamas are not commonly thought of as pets in the classic sense. They are more likely to be regarded as cattle than pets, although they are amiable, social, placid, and easy to train. Llamas and alpacas will eventually become acclimated to the people that- He's reading to the llama. Oh, I'm such a bad parent. I've never read to my cat. You're right here. I have never read to you, baby. But we can watch videos together around them, but this does not always happen straight away. Llamas should never be kept alone. They require the company of another llama. Number 5. Sugar Glider One of the biggest problems of owning any rodent as a household pet is that they are destructive by nature and constantly have to chew on things. This is because all rodents have teeth which constantly grow and therefore must be worn down. Since sugar gliders are not rodents, they do not instinctively need to chew on things and are not destructive by nature. Probably one of the most unique things about sugar gliders as household pets is how strongly and permanently they bond to their human families. Once they are fully bonded to you and your family, they can go almost everywhere with you in public without being caged, and they will not want to leave your shoulder or pocket. Number 4. The Red Panda a lack of public awareness and attention is a problem for some endangered species. Too much misplaced attention in the case of the red panda Sign may be up. harming them by fostering the black market trade in red panda pets. Wild red pandas in cages have recently been reported likely, likely captured for the exotic pet trade. Number 3. Skunks when born and raised in captivity, skunks can make for friendly, intelligent, and unique pets. They can learn to be comfortable when handled by people, and they can be quite playful and cuddly. Native to North America, skunks are known for their scent glands that can spray foul-smelling chemicals as predators. But captive-bred skunks typically have those glands surgically removed. This is a controversial procedure, Ooh. as some people believe it strips away a necessary defense mechanism that a pet skunk would need should it ever get loose outside or otherwise be attacked. Number two, the finger monkey. I think this is a, a list of pets you wish someone you knew had so you could just go hang out with them. For good reason, pygmy marmosets are also known as finger monkeys or pocket monkeys. They are the world's tiniest monkey species as well as one of the world's tiniest primates. A climbing frame might be made from a single finger rather than going up your arm or leg. Finger monkeys, like almost all other domesticated or wild animals, live much longer in captivity. Number 1. The Slow Loris The Slow Loris is cute as can be, but beware because sometimes cute can still be dangerous. The Slow Loris is frequently mentioned when discussing the negative implications of the illegal exotic pet trick. And the private owner of one of these Asian monkeys published a video showing their pet Sonia getting her underarms tickled. The popularity of these Asian primates skyrocketed. With their lethargic, human-like look and behaviors matched by odd nocturnal eyes, lorises have the same appeal as sloths. The little creatures in this countdown all make us want to own them. Well, not all of them, but certainly a few. However, not all of them should be considered after what we have seen. My favorite has to be the capybara. Looks like such a friendly animal. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Yeah, let me know in the comments below. But you know mine, I mean, I can't remember all 15, but the Finnick Fox, the little sand cat dude, um, that little kangaroo jumpy guy that they just showed, all seem like really good options given the size and constraints. Obviously, they're all cute, but that doesn't make them all equally ownable, or I guess they're all not ownable is the point, but whatever. You know what I'm asking. And if you don't, that's okay. This one here. You can't own it. It's mine. You're mine. And you're better looking than all of them, by the way, if I didn't tell you who you are. Who made you so damn good looking? How?
Yep. So, uh, you know, comment, subscribe, do whatever the fuck you need to do. And if you don't, I will bite your ear. But you won't mind. Just like little choo-choo cat here.